Hello. Today we're going to be learning to use QGIS for making interactive maps for your fantasy, sci-fi, and insert timeline here worlds. We'll cover some basic and advanced concepts, but we'll not dive too deep into stuff that's usually not useful for most of our world builders. So let's cover some terminology. What is GIS? It stands for Geographic Information System, which is essentially a term used with databases and software for analyzing and visualizing geospatial data. We're going to be using QGIS, which is a free open source GIS application, which you can fetch from QGIS.org and check our source code at github.com slash QGIS slash QGIS. The QGIS.org site sometimes takes a while to load, so keep that in mind and be patient. So why would one use QGIS? You know there are such software as Incarnet, Wonder Draft, Dungeon Draft, and these are great. They add a lot of artistic freedom, however they are not suited for large-scale details. So if you think of Google Maps, you can zoom in and out of a feature to see it more or less detailed in a way. So not absolutely everything is loaded on your screen. For example, there is no need to load individual buildings when you are zoomed out to a world map. And there is no need to show country names when you are zoomed in to your building. Another essential use is using various geoanalysis tools, coloring and labeling to easily categorize your cultures, nations, pantheons, populations, terrain, and almost any other geographic data in a suitable fashion for you, such as heat maps, diagrams, uh, graduated and categorized polygons, label points, and more. I'd like to cover this in a simple fashion, so it's understandable for beginners and doesn't bore you. Oh, at least, not completely. So if you haven't installed the software yet, please do so. I'm not going to cover how to do that. Once you start the software, you should be presented with a home screen. On the top left, click Project and select New, and you'll be presented with a blank screen. What I'd like you to do first of all is once again, click Project, but select Properties. Go to CRS tab, and in search bar type Equal. Select WGS84 equal Earth Greenwich. Now you can select anything else, but things may break if you don't know what we're doing this for. Anyway, select that and click OK. Perfect. Uh, one more thing. On the top, you have a set of toolbars and you may or may not have some of those enabled. Right click somewhere in the empty space of those toolbars and make sure you have digitizing and snapping toolbars enabled. If you see any others which are enabled here but not for you, you can enable those too but it's likely not going to be focused on in these tutorials. Also, go to plugins Click the Manage button and make sure you have these plugins installed. Most likely, you'll only be missing MMQGIS, which we'll be using for hexagonal or any other grid if we feel like it. So let's assume we're going to be building a world based around the shape of planet Earth, meaning we have an average diameter of uh, 12,742 kilometers to work with. And yes, we're going to be using kilometers. You can set it in properties, right here, you can choose the distance and area measurement. For the purposes of these tutorials, it won't matter which one you go with, they're all valid here in distance measuring systems. So if we scroll down through this list at the browser, we can find a category called XYZ tiles. Uh, double click uh, OpenStreetMap inside it and it'll create a layer for us, which may remind you of Google Maps. You can zoom in and out, but be wary of the server speed as those guys can sometimes be slow to upload for you. Now, this is not a projection we wanted, I assume, but totally valid if it was. However, keep in mind that your hexagons will be squished. So let's go to properties of this layer and select our equal Greenwich CRS and hit OK. This will flatten the map, looks less cool, but oh well. Now, let's create some land. First of all, we're going to be using this map as a base to overlay our land and to have somewhat of an average understanding of our land's area. 
You don't even need to use OpenStreetMap, but if you go out of accordant boundaries, things tend to break. So like, don't, okay? And let's go to OpenStreetMap properties and select legend, and you should see one widget, the opacity slider. Click that, then the blue arrow to the right to activate it, and hit OK. Now we can change the opacity so we can easily use it as underlay or overlay. Let's slide the opacity to the left, just so we can barely see the land mass or just coastal regions. Then on top bar, click layer, create layer, new shapefile layer. If you haven't yet, create a folder for your project. This is where we'll store everything related to it. You can do it here. Click the three buttons to select file location and create a new folder somewhere with Ctrl Shift N. I don't know about you Mac users, your keyboard is alien to me. Go inside the folder, name the file land and click save. File encoding should stay by default UTF-8, geometry type should be polygon. Set this CRS drop down to the project CRS, which is our equal Greenwich. Let's add one field and call it name. Leave it as text data and keep length at 80, or increase it. Don't put too big of a number, as it's a bad memory and computing practice. Click Add to Fields list and hit OK. For this next step, I would suggest you sketch your continents outline first on paper, so it will look more natural when you start building the shape on QGIS. But for my case, I don't have a sketch, so we're going to wing it. Make sure you have your layer selected, then click Pencil Tool on the toolbar, or right-click Layer and click Toggle Editing. Click that green shape button, which says Add Polygon Feature. Now we're going to build two continents in two different methods. One is faster, another is slower. Both have their ups and downs. Let's start with a slow one. Make sure you have your stream digitizing disabled, which is here. And begin adding polygons. We'll use Europe as shape inspiration. You just click a point, then another point, and it'll eventually create a polygon, which you need a minimum of three vertices for. Use large blocky shapes, we'll define them later. Once you are done with a shape, right click and will be presented with a window. Enter one into ID and name it something like Vrostros. I don't know. Grab something from any continent name generator. Rename it to something meaningful later. Click OK. Now let's leave this blocky best for now and create another continent with a faster method. But before that, let's go to our layer properties and go to attribute form. Click ID. Then under default value, type maximum, leave ID in parentheses, plus one. So it can start incrementing it every time without you needing to memorize last ID. If you'd like, you can add an alias to each field so it looks better. Make ID and name properly capitalized. Click OK. Save a project somewhere if you haven't yet, with Ctrl S or Project Save. Now, make sure you still have your Add Polygon tool and let's turn on Stream Digitizing or hit R. Click any point and start drawing the shape. Right click when done. Name it anything. For me, it's Ephora. Another name from Continent Name Generator. Let's add a water layer. In a similar fashion, we added a land layer. No need to create any fields. We're not naming water sea or ocean, because we can do it later. Right now, we only care about the base water layer, which will span the entire world. It's also completely valid to set a different project background color in project properties. 
but I like to do it this way. And you all know the teacher's way is the only right way. Once created, put the water layer under the land layer by just dragging it. Go to water layer's properties, then go to symbology and style it however you want. For this purpose, we're going to be using Google Maps colors. Turn off a stroke by selecting no pen in stroke style and change the fill color to hashtag 9cc 0f9 which is a nice appealing blue. Then do the same with land layer but set the color to BBE2C6. In the next video, we can start adding mountains, rivers, and nations. Why don't you try doing that with a knowledge you already acquired?